Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, it's not going to be boring, it's going to be drilling and reaming. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're going to get this axle pump body finally finished. At least I think we are anyway. I've jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I've got the silver soldered, done the silver soldering for the, uh, the mounting flange. So I'll cut to a new clip here now, show you what I was doing, what I did to get that silver soldered on while that's showing. I'll get this in the chuck on the lathe and we'll move on to the next bit. All right, guys, here it comes. Right, guys, so this is a major step forward now. Going to get these two parts silver soldered together. As you can see, when they were in the machines, I used the tooling to just put a scribe line across there and a scribe line across there. So hopefully when these get silver salt together, they'll line up pretty close, pretty close, yep. And that will at least make sure that, or give it a good fighting chance that everything is square to each other. So I've just made up, you gonna stay there? Yes, you are. Right, just made up a little bit of flux, which is just a white pad and a couple of drops of water. So I'm just going to run this. Quite difficult look at doing this with looking through the camera. I'm going to run it around here, some into the hole. Uh, I'm just move that brick out. Right. I'm going to put the whole thing in the middle here. Set this then onto the top of there. A bit more flux as we go. And we'll move this brick in, keep the heat in because it's quite a big chunk. So it's going to take a while to warm it through. And then it's a case of once it's all warmed up or getting to close to temperature, we just keep applying the silver solder when it melts, when it's in contact with the metal and the metal's hot enough. Don't actually melt it in the flame because it's just going to glob and sit there. Right. So let's get this going. This could be a bit longer than I expect it to be, but uh, you'll get the process. So we're going to get this onto here. At least try to anyway. Everything's been cleaned. The flux will clean it as well. There we go. You can see it's going on there. Best it can anyway. So that uh, when we get these two bits fastened together, that will make the pump body complete. Just rest that up there. Get this bit now. Get some on the inside. All right. And get these two bits put together, lined up. There we go. Lovely. Nice fit. A little bit squeezing through, always good. That looks like it's that's close lined up as I'll get it. I'll just rest that in there very carefully. Oh, great. Then I go and move it. So let's line that up again. There we go. Let's move this brick in. That will keep a bit of the heat in. Right. I'll move you guys in as well. There we are. Turn the gas on. There we go. That's the gas now. Rusty blowtorch. So everything's at hand now. Blowtorch, spare flux, so I can dip the tip of the silver solder into it as we're going along. And uh, we'll get this put together. Right, guys, so let's get this going. Come on. There we go.
clouds. Close enough. Got a little scratch wire in my hand now. So hopefully we can just start to tease that. Ooh, we've got a nice little wind around everywhere now. And hopefully that has now sucked its way in by capillary action in a couple of seconds. Alrighty, I think we'll... That's it, let's kill it at that. Now that's going to have to stand for about 10 or 15 till it really cools down because I don't want to move it because I'm, it's still too hot. It'll just move that top plate, the bolting plate. And once that goes uh, down to cooling, then uh, I can get it into the pickle bath and we'll clean up and we'll take a look after that. All right, guys, back in after, back once this has been pickled and cleaned up. Okay, so that was showing how I silver soldered the flange onto the body itself. As you can see, I'll show you in close up now. A little bit too much on the silver solder, but that's going. I'm going to machine that face uh, square in it once it's in the chuck. Just take a little skim until I get it clean. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to show you. If you look down, right down. Let me have my scrub. If you look right down in here, all the way around, there is just there's a yeah. The light's just catching it now. There you go. You can see we've got a nice little run of silver solder all the way around. So that means that this joint has penetrated the whole depth. So I got that right. And uh, that's a good solid joint. That's never going to come apart unless you add a lot of heat to it. Right. So this will now go in the chuck. Quick face off on this. And then we're going to start putting a hole through the middle so that we can actually turn this Ooh, that must be at least a kilo of brass, into a working pump. All right, All right, guys, I'll get you back when I'm in the chuck. Right, guys, so here I am. Got the, butt, the axle pump body set up in the three jaw. Uh, chuck's all clear, so we're not going to fail anything. Got a cutting tool here in the tool post. We're just going to take a facing cut across here just to clean everything up. And then we have to go start drilling and reaming through the body itself. So I've got a whole series of drills. I've got four drills in the reamer to go through and a big center drill to start us off. So a center drill, five mil, seven mil, seven and a half mil I've got, ten and a half, and then the 12 last, and then we ream at 12.7. Uh, question, why am I doing so many drills? Well, drills are notorious for not drilling the right size. They'll drill oversize. So to try and minimize that, especially seeing as I really don't want to go making this twice, just going to take it out slowly, slowly, a little bit of time, getting down to the 12 mil drill, or rather getting up to 12 mil drill, and then going through with the reamer after that. And of course, a reamer is uh, designed and made to actually produce a parallel and very smooth bore through the through whatever it goes through, which in this case is exactly what we want because this is the axle pump. So let's get the lathe going. Going to take a little face enough cut on here, get rid of all this excess silver solder, clean up this face so it's parallel. Well, it's pun perpendicular is the word I'm looking for to the axle the axle pump body which is of course in the chuck and then we'll start the drilling and reaming right here we go guys let's do this I really don't want to mess this up so let's hope we get it right first time <laughs>
Okay, yep, just have a take another cut off that and we'll just keep on going at it till we get a clean surface. Just that middle. Right. I think we can leave that at that. Right. Let's get this tool out of the tool post. Put that on its little support out of the way. Let's move that out of the way. Right. So, auto operations, guys. Big center drill, which is just coming into view. Now, I think, yeah, there we go. So, center drill. 5 mil drill as far as it will go, then a 7.5, then a 10.5, then a 12, and then we'll get this reamed out. Ah, man, this is exciting. I really don't want this to go wrong. Here we go, guys. <laughs> do for that. Now of course I'm going to change to the 5 mil drill now. I've just got them all set up on the bench in the right order so I just have to toddle across the workshop to go get them. Of course as we go down through the, the pump body I've got various holes to cross and various slots that the drills are going to cut into. Again playing on the Erring on the side of caution, that's we're just going to go slowly, slowly. Oh, back of those got no trouble. And uh, brass also tends to be a little bit grabby sometimes. So just make sure everything's locked down nice and tight. And we'll carry on as we go. All right, here goes. <laughs> So that's us, we're through into the cross hole for the valves. And I'm going to break through to the other side. Yep, seems okay. I'm just going to wind the drill back every now and then just to make sure it's clear of chips. I'll go as deep as I can with each drill. Gonna move the tail stock forward a little bit just to give me a bit more reach. Right, 
Right, one drill down, three to go. So change up to the next size, which of course is then a little bit longer. So I might not need to move the tail stock up this time. Just go as far as I can, take my time. I draw the drill every time, clear the chips. Make sure we've got the drill chip nice and tight. There we go. Move back up. Lock down the tail stock. Nice and tight. There we go. Okay, here we go. Breaking through. I have to catch up on the other side of the cross hole. Seems to go pretty well. Just clear out some chips. Again, move the tail stop forward, get me as much travel as I can. Now we've, we've reached the extent of the 5 mil, I can feel the difference in the drill. Let's clear the chips. We're now into full drilling. Clear the chips. I think we're starting to hit the little slots that we've already created in the side. I can feel a bit of a click, 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 click. We could probably hear it. Let's clear those chips again. Let's go as far as we can. Right, let's call it quits at that. I think you could probably hear there was a little bit of a clickety clickety click as we got further down in that. That's as we hit the slots that we've created for the pin that the axle pump yoke rides on. So I'm just taking my time as we break through into all those bits. Hopefully all this first bit of the pump here will act as a guide and keep the drill from wandering. Of course, when we get down to uh, doing the reaming, I'll be going a lot slower on the lathe. In fact, I think I'll slow it down now. So we are on A3 on this model, which is A3, which is 700. That's not too bad. Let's drop it to a C3, which will be... C3 will be 550. Yeah, it's probably a little bit, a little bit slower for the drilling. Looking through the cross hole, I can see we've broken through the thread there nicely. Not too many burrs, but I will, of course, run a tap through that before we start putting anything together. So here goes for one, two, the third drill. Here we go. the cross hole for the valve body and start hitting the other side. And we're through that as well nicely, just taking the time. Tail stuck up again. Just 
Brooks, Lazy. See what I mean about brass being grabby. Just have to reset that. There we go. Right. right let's just get this. Right. Get it back running and we'll get this back into place. There we go. Touch him again. Right, now we're down to as far as the last rule went. Yeah, I can see chips in the valve box. Screws that squid, that's the tail stop. We're hitting those slots again. So an interrupted cut basically with a drill. We're not going to have to move the tail stock up a third time. So I can get as much depth as I can. Interesting, okay, that's it. Well, we might even be all the way through at that. Let me move this out of the way. There we go. Take that drill out now. Let's have a little look through, see if we can see through the bore. Yes, we can. Goodness me. Right, one more drill to go. That's the 12 mil. Again, cross to the bench, pick up the right drill. This is a 12 mil. Now, get this into the I'll check again. This is, should be the this will be the last one. It's the biggest I've got. Anyway, I don't have a twelve and a twelve point four or twelve point five. And then we can get the reamer in. We'll slow the blade right down. Machine reamer. There we go, nice and tight. And again, we might just have to adjust the chuck the tail stock a couple of times to run that one as well. Right. Lock the tail stock down. Here we go. Breaking through into where the fittings go, the valve box fittings. Now we're across to the other side. I can see that through the holes. I don't know if camera two can see that. I'm just going to wind that back a bit now and then move the tail stock up. All those flutes are disappearing, so I'm going to wind back just to make sure we're clearing it. the flutes of the drill and the chips. Right, I've reached where the end of the ten and a half mil drill was. So I'll move forward again. And see if we can get out the other end of this actual pump. Really at the limit of the drills. Right, 
Right, okay. Man, that was nerve wracking. I'll turn that drill out there so I don't stab myself in the end until I look through. And I can see all the way through. Good God, man. That was frightening. All right. Now, here's a half inch machine reamer. You can tell it's a machine reamer, not only by the fact they've got this nice uh, plain end on it with a fit in a drill chuck, but also that the flutes are straight. Uh, if it was a hand reamer, the flutes would be spiraled and there'd be a square on the end here, like uh, for the end, as if it was a, a large tap, because then, of course, you, you, a hand reamer, you put in a tap wrench to actually use it. So, let's do this. Get this in nice and tight. I don't want this wobbling around. I want this to produce a nice, smooth bore, hopefully. As I said, there's a lot of hours gone into this pump body. I really don't want to mess it up. Right, now let's drop the speed right down. And we'll pull back and you know, clear the chips are very, very regular on this one. So let's go on this load. It's going to be a B1. That will give me 65 RPM. Right, is that going to be... Oh, that feels it. Let's have a look. There we go. 65 RPM and just take my time. I'm going to move that back, move the test up as far as I can. And we will see how we go. All right, here goes. Certainly taking something off. Just taking my time, nice and slow. Right, I've just broken through into the cross hole where the, uh, the valves go. Wind it back, here's my brush. Doesn't seem a lot, I know, but I'm gonna clear that. Right, let's go in again. Man, I need to put some oil on that handle on the tail stuff. Right. Going across now. Yep. This is through, through I call it valve body again. I can see a reasonable amount of chips in there. Right, I'm going to wind that back and clean that out. Yep. Back we go. Okay, contacts. The end, of, end of the travel on the tail stock, so I will use that as an opportunity to clean out the chips. Move the tail stock forward. Lock it down again. There we go. And we're cutting again. Wind that back, pull it out. <coughs> Man, got the shapes here doing this. This is nerve wracking, it really is. Right, back in we go. That's as deep as we got last time. Clean it. And then we go again. So 
one line that back to give me the most possible travel. I think we got to about there, didn't we, last time? Right, lock it down. Yep, there we go. Now, will that bit go in the hole? No, it won't. Uh, doesn't matter, we've got some turning to do anyway, some more turning, yep. Right. Right, that's... Oh. I don't know else, but that was nerve-wracking for me. Now, let's just have the pump ram. Let's see if this reamer is cutting through now, of course. Oh, look at that. I've got a burr on there. Okay. Oh, I do too. Just got a little burr on here, guys, so I'll have to click, give these a bit more of a clit, this a bit more of a clean up. But that's so you've got to imagine the pump's powered from the other end and it comes in and out like this. So but that is a nice fit. Now I didn't quite reach the end with the reamer, but that's okay because I've just got to check the drawing. We actually have to put um a couple of recesses in here, and then we've got to put a tap in here for the plug that goes in the end. Right. So let me take that reamer out of the drill chuck. I will stop the videos just there, guys, because I've got to go check a few things. And I'll bring you back and we'll start boring out a recess for here. Okay, guys, give me a second. Right, guys, so I've changed out the tool. Got a little boring tool in there. Hopefully you can see that on one of these cameras anyway. So that hole in the middle there, we need to take it from 12 mil, well, 12.7. That's how the reamer go through it, uh, out to 15.3. And then we'll need to tap it 3.8 BSP. Uh, so, yep, and we go 10 deep. I've already touched off with the tip of this little boring bar on the flange, so I've got my zero set on the uh, compound slide, and uh, we'll just need to go into the hole and touch off when the lathe's running. I'll need to change the speed runner. Let's go to what we at before A3. That's right. That will do us 700 RPM. Not quite. There we go. Quick test on that. Let's wind that out. Yep. The gears are engaged uh, so 10 deep so on the on this lathe anyway the uh, compound that's three turns and 119 divisions so I'm just gonna get this going go into the hole come bring the tool out touch off and uh, take a cut and then we'll start measuring from there so what 12.7 to 15.3 is 2.6 sounds about right 2.6 uh, mil to come out of that hole uh, to a depth of 10 mil. Okay, here goes. There's this touch off. So we'll just take this nice and slowly and not in any rush, little and lightly. One. Two, three, and one hundred and ten. I'll call it at that. And then we'll take a bit more off. And repeat. One, two, three, hundred and ten. So four eight twelve. So I've taken out about probably one point four 
millimeters. We need to get to 15.3, so let's have a quick, quick and dirty measure. Should be very, so quite a bit of distance to go. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Yeah, 14.2 at the moment. Got to get to 15.3, so we'll take another four off that. Just going to sneak up on this and we'll get there eventually. All right, here goes. <laughs> Probably taken out another just shy of a millimeter, I would think. Let's see where we're at, best we can. Come on, let me get that in. Right, let's see where we're at at that. Fifteen points. One, one, five, one, fifteen, two. Right, let's just take out. That last little bit. And then we'll get the reamer back through if we're right, because I don't, I'll do the tapping last, just in case this body rotates in the chuck and it might throw things out. Uh, and I wouldn't want that. Okay, here we go. This should be the last cut for this little recess for the, the thread that we've got to put in here. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. I don't really want to take that tool out of the post. Right, let's have a look. 15.25 to, yeah, okay, maybe just a little bit more. So maybe just a bit nervous on that one. Right, wind it out to there. This should be the last cut. <laughs> Fifteen point four. That's close enough. Right. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to just run this back through, just to take any spring out, and go to the total depth of three turns and one hundred and nineteen, and then I'm going to move the boring bar that way, just a little bit, just to give us a nice flat bottom to that uh, counter bore. Okay. Here goes. <laughs> One. 
one, two, three, I'll go to 119 divisions, start the squeak, 119, there we go, wind the tool that way a little bit, just to give us a nice flat bottom, wind back out. All right. right. That should do us, guys. Right, let's get rid of that tool then. That being said, put it back on its holder. Wind this out. All the way. Forward as well. Oh, that looks nice. Yep, doesn't look bad at all. Right, now I can get to it. Properly. Let's have a measure. Wouldn't be too much of a disaster if it is a little bit larger. That's good. We're at 15.253, We're about 15.5. That's okay. It's only a thread for a plug, so that's not a problem at all. Right, so now we're going to be able to get that reamer back in. Uh, I'll put that on the bench out of the way, out of the way, nice and safe. Let's get that back in the drill chuck. Now, and that chucking piece on the end of the rim, I should now go a little bit further into the pump itself. Now, what we're on, we're on 65, so we need a B1 again. There we are. B. One. Yep, there we go. Right. Let's get this reamer to go all the way through this time, guys. So, and that looks odd, doesn't it? Going into a hole like that. Actually, you know, let's have the machine running as we go. Yep, okay, so we've not raised any burr at the bottom of that counterbore, so let's just move it forward. Yep, we seem okay. We got as far as there last time, where the body changes dimension. Let's see if we can push on through the other end. Well, that's as far as it goes. Right, let's take that out of there. Like that. And uh, there's the pump body and now go a little bit further. Oh yeah, nice. Let's try it that way with the O-ring. Got spare O-ring, so if I do damage it, it's not going to. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, nice fit. Drop of oil on that would be fine. Super. Mm. As far as I can see them out, this is gonna be a goer. Right. Uh, I'll stop it there, guys. I'll set up for the, the with my 3 8 uh, BSP tap. As you can see, we did just take some material out and just clean that off, and then that can go back in its box and uh, you'll be ready to use another day. Give a second, guys. I'll find my tap and I'll be back. Right, so 3 8 BSP tap in the chuck. Gonna do like I normally do, push that way and with the tail stop, once I get it lined up and locked down, I can make this a bit more steady. Why not? Back as far as it needs to go. There we go. And then it's a case of twisting the chuck this way while turning the handwheel that way until it starts squeaking. And then we can leave it up to pull itself in. Uh, here it goes. I'm cutting already. I might just release the tail stock at that and just push it, to be honest. Are we moving? Yes, we are. We're cutting. Now, of course, we ain't going to get many threads. But we go until the chuck and the leg tell us we're at the, we've bottomed out. 
Now we're squeaking, so we're definitely cutting. Okay. Can't be far left to go. 19 threads to the inch on a M3, uh, sorry, a 3.8 BSP tap. So we're going 10 mil, so that's what, about two fifths? So that means 19 for probably about eight threads this is going to have at the most. Probably only going to have about three or four that are going to be usable because of the taper on the end of the tap. Oh, we're still going. Oh, there we go. Clunk. I could feel that. Yep, that's as far as we're going to go on that one, guys. So, pushing back. There we go. Tailstock is released, so it will just slide itself back. But I am just pulling gently on the tailstock now as I wind back. So, when it's ready to come free, it will. There we go. Yep, I can feel the thread in there. Good. Whew, man. Right. I think we're done. Uh, we've done the counter ball, we've done the thread, we've drilled the reamed. Right, I'll take this out of the chuck and I'll meet you back at the bench, guys. Hang on. Okay, guys, so here we are. Just spent a few minutes polishing and deburring the ram. Just a very quick, very temporary put it together. Here's all the fittings we've made, suction and discharge, the valve bodies with the little valves inside them. This is a commercial elbow, which we've adjusted. I adjusted to the, according to the drawings, nothing too exciting there. The pump body, which itself was a hell of a job. The flange got silver soldered on. This is the plug in the end, which is just in there temporarily. This is all just temporarily put together. I put the bolt through. Put the, the yoke on it, which we made many, many videos ago. And we have a nice, it's fairly stiff at the minute, but you can see how this now works. Because as this will be attached to the eccentric on the axle, this will take up the rotary motion and turn into linear motion. There we go. And you can see how the pump actually now progresses backwards and forwards. It's all come together nicely, the little O-ring I've had a squeeze through there. You can't even see the little O-ring when it's fully back. So we're going to get plenty of uh, plenty of pump out of that. Uh, let's see if I can just undo that one. Yep, there we go. Take away its copper washer as well. Where did that go? There it is. And so when that's fully forward, you can see in the hole there that um, extension, that little um, bit that we turned on the end of the axle pump to really squeeze the very last bit out of of water out of that pump housing that valve housing we're going to go back into focus yes there we are so no bother at all this is a lot of chunks come together to make a little a lot of little chunks together to make a big chunk i'm really happy with that i really am a lot of work gone into it but it's gonna it's worth it these aren't quite lined up at the moment. This one, as far as I'm aware, should point straight backwards underneath the pump body. So I'll just have to play around with my sim washers until I get that right. All right, guys, just give us a second. Back in a tick. Righto, guys. So that'll bring this video to close. Axle pump, yoke, the pin, all the bits, the plug, the flange, the suction and discharge, the little valves, the fittings they run up and down in. And, uh, yep, it all works. Nice and easy. I did just put a little drop of oil in it. So this is the end of a whole series of videos, isn't it? Uh, got a little bit of clean up to do. There's one or two rough edges. I just want to take a file too, but it's done. In big chunks, it's done. This could literally be painted up now, lined up with the copper washers once I get them right and bolted into the frames ready to go. I've still got to get the frames off to the grip blasters to get them gritted, uh, grip blasted and they, they'll come back fully painted in a lovely shade of dark grey prana. Right up, guys. So this is a chef saying, if you can find it in your heart and soul, give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell. If you're a watcher out there, please, please think about uh, hitting that subscribe button. It's totally free. Don't get it. I don't get anything from it. I'm not big enough. I don't think I'll ever will be big enough to get anything from it. This I do for myself, but your support in just being a subscriber helps me immensely. So once again, this is a chef saying, 
See you later, and I'll see you in the next one.